Joining me now, Harvard Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz. Uh, sir, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, some serious questions here. Clearly, there's no evidence of you partaking in any wrongdoing, but you were his attorney. Now, with Epstein being dead, it's fair for is it fair for me to ask, like, did you know about this stuff? And if you could go back, would you have never associated with him? I was introduced to him by the Lady Rothschild, a very prominent woman who told me he is a major contributor at Harvard and was interested in science. I attended science lecture seminars that he attended. But the moment I learned about the accusations, I terminated any personal relationship with him. I did serve as his lawyer. John Adams served as the lawyer for the Boston Massacre people. Um, and um, I got a deal for him, which he hated, refused to pay me my fee. He thought he shouldn't have to go to jail or register as a sex offender. Everybody else thought it was a sweetheart deal. The most important thing is this dump didn't affect me much at all, because the woman who accused me had already, as you said, admitted that she may have confused me with somebody else and was a case of mistaken identification. She withdrew all of her legal charges against me. But what I'm concerned about is that not everything has been produced. I asked for everything to be produced. I was the one who first asked to have all the documents produced, because I have nothing to hide. I had sex with one woman from the day I met Jeffrey Epstein to the day he died, my wonderful wife and never, never had any improper relationship with anybody else. Other people did have relationships, and they have things to hide, and they're the ones who try to keep the secret. I want everything out. I volunteered to be deposed about everything, and I was deposed, and I told the truth. The problem with this, as one of the judges pointed out, when you have things that are done, even under oath, but in court papers, they're immunized from defamation. So the judge said, be very careful about documents that are submitted in court. If you say it on television, you can be sued. But if you say it in court, you can't be sued. So we need to have all the documents produced. We need to have all the issues. I agree with you. We should treat this the way others were treated. Yeah. We, should, we should seize. We should de de depose and subpoena. Yeah. Let's get to the bottom of this. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they got to the bottom of this. And I have, you know, my, my innocence has been prove that I asserted it from the day I was right. accused, but others need to have an opportunity to prove their innocence, if they're innocent, or Sir, if they're guilty, they're guilty. Yeah, well, you brought up an interesting thing about John Adams defending the British when a very unpopular in the Boston massacre, but you also defended Donald Trump, and you're a liberal. You wanted the right to vote against him a third time, you said. So I, I can appreciate that standpoint. Is there anything, though, that I, I think the public would like to know as much as possible? Is there anything with him being dead that you can disclose that say, like, hey, this guy might have been worse or better? Is there anything that, that, that you can tell us about that? Well, I'll tell you an interesting story. It's a name-dropping story. I was having dinner at Caroline Kennedy's house on Martha's Vineyard with her husband, my wife, and Bill Clinton, and one other couple. And the phone rang. He was president. The Secret Service gave President Clinton the phone. He talked on it for about 10 minutes away. I could see he was animated, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. And then he handed the phone to me and said, someone wants to say hello to you, and it was Jeffrey Epstein. So obviously, Bill Clinton and Jeffrey Epstein knew each other. This was years before there was any uh, allegation of impropriety. Epstein knew everybody. Remember the Woody Allen movie, Zelig? That was Woody Allen. He knew everybody. He knew the emir of this and the this uh, president of this. He met Fidel Castro. He showed, sent me a picture of Fidel Castro. He introduced me to some of the most interesting people, including people at Harvard that I had never met after being right. there 40 or so years. And then this all came out. And those of us who terminated our relationship with him are in one category. Those who continued a personal relationship with him after he had to register as a sex offender are in a somewhat different category. Right. Well, then, you know, there's been a suspicious level of debate regarding the release of these documents. Now, Congressman Tim Burchett, who is on our network, believes he knows why. Too many of my colleagues, I'm afraid, are compromised uh, in this area for whatever reason. Somebody just whispered in their ear, said, hey, you don't want something to come out? on something else, you better keep your mouth shut on this. And that's exactly what they've done. Well, sir, as I closed out my monologue, too, I want to know, with this as a starting point, who's going to be held accountable? Because right now, Ghislaine Maxwell is sitting in, in jail for trafficking children to apparently no one. There were other people who trafficked, including some of the accusers and some of the people uh, who, uh, who whose names have not been revealed. Um, according to the evidence that I've seen, uh, Jeffrey Epstein paid some people to bring him other people. All of this has to come out. 
Um, and I have seen a lot of the documents that so far haven't come out. And there's, there's, there, there, there are smoking guns in there involving a lot of people. Some of them accusers, some of them accused, some of them who have a relationship with Epstein. We have only seen the tip of the iceberg. And so, yes, I commend the judge for revealing what she revealed, but I want her to reveal more. We are today filing a paper in court asking for more to be revealed. And I'm the only person who was ever accused who wants all the information out and for a good reason. I have nothing to hide. Yeah, well, Alan Dershowitz, I wish you were, hadn't been on the plane, sir, but I do have a re great respect for you for coming on and sharing your side of the story. Well, thank you so much. All right.